This is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us. We're getting closer and closer to distributing COVID vaccines, but there's still a lot of work left to sort out. We do have team coverage tonight. Brady Mallory shares what Dane County's role will be, but we're going to begin with Naomi Coles on how the governor is looking to prioritize Wisconsin and specifically its half million health care workers. Naomi. Charlotte, the governor estimates that Wisconsin is going to need $10 million to distribute this vaccine just between January and March. First in line, of course, are Wisconsin's 450,000 health care workers. Hospitals like SSM Health here behind me are working to finalize their plans to get vaccines to their employees. Simply getting the freezers to store the vaccine was a challenge. The Pfizer vaccine has to be stored in ultra cold freezers at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Now, SSM Health is figuring out how to get the vaccines to all of its hospitals. Distribute the vaccine to smaller sites is another issue of packing the vaccine correctly and appropriately, sending it to the appropriate location. Once we get it out of the freezer, we will want to make sure that our vaccination sites are ready as the vaccine arrives, because the clock is ticking, we need to give the vaccine within that short period of time. SSM Health expects to be ready by mid-December, when the first doses should arrive in the state. It's, it's going to be a, a quite a, an operation here to try to vaccinate all employees over a short period of time. They have more than 10,000 of them, and it's just one health care system out of many getting first dibs. We also have an imminent need to be prioritized to receive vaccine shipments. Fueled by state legislative inaction and surging case counts, the governor has asked the U.S. Department of Health to put Wisconsin high on its distribution list. State health leaders don't yet know how long it will take for health care workers alone to get it because we don't yet know how large weekly shipments will be. But no one will have to get it. Decisions uh, around uh, taking the vaccine um, are individual decisions and, and the decision of, of that particular employer. Wisconsin law allows employers to require a vaccine with disability and religious exemptions. What's interesting is both of those categories have been construed fairly narrowly. A labor attorney who represents businesses around the state is hearing from clients that many will likely encourage rather than require it. But if so, employees that object could have a hard time in court. And I think that the analysis is going to be different in a world where we've got COVID. I think a court might you know, give an employer more latitude to require it. Ultimately, talking to people in healthcare, the vaccine on the horizon brings a sigh of relief. We can see the light now at the end of the tunnel. Neither SSM Health or Unity Point Murder plans to make this vaccine mandatory yet. Talking to other healthcare systems in the area, UW Health isn't yet ready to share their plans for distribution. Meritor tells me that they plan to prioritize employees who have high exposure to COVID-19 first. They also have all the equipment they need right now to get that vaccine plan going. Meanwhile, Brady Mallory is over covering Dane County's plans for distribution. Brady? Well, it's a question a lot of people are asking, how will I even get those shots? Well, there is a system, but Dane County Public Health's role is actually fairly small. Public Health doesn't actually distribute the vaccine. That'll be up to the state and health care providers. Once first-tier people, such as health care workers, get the vaccine, the state will need to hire a mass vaccinator. Whoever that ends up being will work to get vaccines to the general public. The state also needs to develop software to track the distribution. Those two uh, items are, are yet to be put in place, um, but we have time. We have, we have time. There's, there's um, the first tier uh, would probably be starting in the next couple weeks um, and wouldn't probably be finishing until maybe the middle or end of January. And then we'll start looking at the next tier. Fagley says public health departments have had a little practice in mass vaccinations, like H1N1, for instance, so they're ready to step up if the state needs help. Of course, this effort will be much longer and possibly take several months. You may eventually see drive-up lanes at the Alliant Energy Center change from COVID testing into vaccination spots, but that's only if needed. Brady, thank you. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway is calling for patience as the vaccine will go to priority groups first, like residents in long term care facilities and health care workers. And because that vaccine is likely not going to be available for all of us until next spring or later, it's really important that we all keep taking the precautions that we're taking now. Wash your hands, wear your mask, keep your distance, take it outside if you can. 
Um, don't gather with uh, folks indoors if at all possible. Keep yourself. Wisconsin has officially exceeded a lifetime total of 400,000 COVID-19 cases. The milestone comes less than three weeks after the state surpassed the 300,000 mark. There are almost 4,500 new cases confirmed today, and healthcare workers are worried a post-Thanksgiving spike is on the horizon. There are 66 new deaths and 172 new hospitalizations. Governor Evers has ordered flags to be flown at half-staff on Saturday in honor of a Jefferson County first responder who died from COVID-19. Exonia Fire and EMS Captain Kelly Rather died on Thanksgiving Day. She contracted COVID-19 when responding to the emergency medical needs of a patient. Her funeral is on Saturday. Rather was an EMT for 15 years and was also a nursing professor. Governor Evers says Captain Rather served her community every day with astounding courage and selflessness. He called this a devastating loss and asked people to remember how critical our actions are in helping keep others safe during the pandemic. To weather now, the sunshine continues. Let's check your first warn forecast with meteorologist Chris Reese. Hi, Chris. Charlotte, we had some of those clouds earlier today to make me a little nervous, but as temperatures warmed up, we did see more sunshine into the afternoon, and I'm happy to say I expect more sunshine for the rest of the week and into the weekend. Now, we look at the weather map across the country. There was one little storm system that passed by to our south, but high pressure on either side of that really limited the amount of moisture that system was able to pick up on. In addition to that, there's a little cold front towards the north that's going to be sliding southward overnight. That means tomorrow we will be just a couple of degrees cooler for those afternoon highs when you compare that to what we had out there today. Speaking of high temperatures, we made it to 40, 40 for Monroe as well. Basketball making it to 45, lacrosse at 46. These temperatures are so far above normal for this time of the year, but we're cooling down. Our wind chill at 32, our actual air temperature has come down into the 30s as well. We're going to cool down to 26 overnight tonight. Folks, the next six to 10 days, we have a strong probability of above normal normal temperatures throughout much of the lower 48, but especially in the upper Midwest with their signs that that begins to change by the time you get you towards the middle of the month. Thank you, Chris. The Trump campaign has filed a federal lawsuit aiming for the Republican-controlled state legislature to pick Wisconsin's electors. The case challenges whether indefinitely confined voters' ballots should count. It says Dane County clerks misguided advice in March that voters could use the pandemic to claim that status had irretrievable damage. The lawsuit targets Dane and Milwaukee counties, but also city and county officials in Racine, Kenosha, and Green Bay, along with the Secretary of State. The Wisconsin Supreme Court has refused to hear President Trump's attempt to overturn his election loss. Today, justices said the case must find its way through lower courts. The president had argued that going through the lower courts would take too long since presidential electors cast their ballots on December 14th. A Trump campaign attorney says he will file the lawsuit in circuit court. The Assembly Committee on Campaigns and Elections will hold a public hearing next week, Friday. Chair of the committee, Representative Ron Tussler, says they'll be investigating, quote, numerous irregularities with the 2020 general election. He says Wisconsinites deserve to know that their vote mattered and that all votes were legitimate. Although misinformation has spread in the weeks following Election Day, officials have not encountered any evidence of voter fraud in the state. A court commissioner has ruled there is sufficient evidence for Kyle Rittenhouse to head to trial. He's accused of killing two men and injuring a third during August protests in Kenosha. The decision came after a contentious hearing in which defense attorneys sought to show the Illinois teen had acted in self-defense. New at six, attorneys for the 15-year-old boy charged in a shooting in Mayfair Mall in Wauwatosa plans to contest prosecutors' attempts to move his case to adult court. During a virtual hearing today, a Milwaukee County judge scheduled an in-person hearing on the matter for February 16th. That teen faces eight felony counts of first-degree reckless injury and one misdemeanor count of possessing a firearm while under 18. Madison's interim police chief Vic Wall is looking for feedback on how the department handled this summer's riot, independent uh, summer's protest. Jamie Perez shares how an independent study hopes to improve MPD's response in the future. <laughs> How did the Madison Police Department handle this summer's protests? Well, it depends on who you ask. It was a disaster. I'm very proud of how 
we handled things and how our officers acted. You know, certainly we've uh, recognized some areas for improvement. Greg Golumbuk on the left is the co-founder of Madison's community response team. The police response completely exacerbated the situation and precipitated, you know, what ultimately, you know, occurred. He's encouraging people to fill out an independently run survey that's reviewing MPD's response to the protests. Hundreds of hours of video. We're looking at thousands of pages of police reports. We've got a website that we've created to solicit input from the community. John Hallway is the executive director at the Quattrone Center, the Penn Law School research group that's running the survey. He said the more people who participate, the better recommendations they can make, even though he knows that some people are hesitant to submit anything out of fear of leading to further arrests and incriminating more people. That's certain Certainly not the intention of any of this, um, but it is possible, you know, that information will be shared and we would encourage people not to share any information that they don't feel comfortable sharing. If someone submits a video of them, you know, killing somebody, I'm not going to tell you that we're not going to use that or if there's some very serious crime that somehow is in a video that ends up in the hands of the Quatron Center. I haven't asked them to, to share things with us. I haven't asked them to try to, you know, compile evidence. That's not why we're involved in this. Hallway and Wall said the point of this is not to discipline anyone, but to help understand what happened, why it happened, and create space for systemic change. There's a group of people uh, who are civically minded, including the police, who want to accept the responsibility for an event that didn't go the way we want it to and want to learn from it so that the next event is more in line with community expectations. In Madison, I'm Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. The Quattrone Center Executive Director says it will be a few months before they are able to release the report. Chief Wall says he would like their findings to be made public. New at 6, today the Speaker's Task Force on Racial Disparities met in person at Lambeau Field to discuss body cameras, use of force reporting, and crisis intervention training. A representative from the Center for Suicide Awareness spoke about the importance of officer wellness and resiliency. He said in 2020 alone, there have been 266 law enforcement deaths throughout the United States, 150 55 have been by COVID, 42 from gun violence, a number that is not included in the total, 266 deaths. is another 155 who have died by suicide. And when we think about COVID and the officers and individuals that have died by COVID, we are hopeful that a vaccine will show up really soon, right? We are hopeful that everybody will have access to this vaccine. There is no vaccine for trauma. There is no vaccine for depression, anxiety, suicide. And when an officer who's been on the job, whether it's six months or 10 years, that's a lot of trauma to unpack. But you have this conscience that you He urged the group to consider the gaps in mental health resources for officers. Green Bay's mayor also mentioned at the meeting that the Packers are helping the police department purchase body cameras. Coming up next at 6, an idea to spice up your holiday celebration at home. How about a cocktail kit from a Christmas-themed pop-up bar? We'll show you how Lucille has transformed when we come back. It's the big baking sale this Thursday through Sunday at hy V. hy V large eggs, just 88 cents. Butter, only $1.88. Flour, just 98 cents, and that smart sugar, just 98 cents. This Thursday through Sunday, only at High V. Get genuine value on gifts for Christmas during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's huge gift sale going on now. Shop amazing deals store wide on great gifts for everyone on your list. For the chef, this West Bend air fryer is $60 off. New at Blaine's, men's work and sport thermals are just $14.99. Give the gift of winter readiness with a Schumacher battery charger, only $54.99. And a Blaine's Farm and Fleet gift card is always the perfect gift. Plus, buy online and pick up your items in our convenient drive-thru. You don't even need to get out of your car. Let's get to it, America, because joy doesn't just happen. You make it happen. And during the Ford Built for the Holidays sales event, we're helping you make even more joy. Come get the best deals of the season with offers on select Ford SUVs and Ford Fusion. Everything you need to make the holidays brighter than ever. That's how we're making joy this season. How will you? Choose FlexBuy and get Fusion with 0% financing for 66 months, plus 1,500 cash and 2,000 retail trade assist. Get more home for the holidays now at the Brothers Main Black Friday is Today sale. 
every single brand we carry is Black Friday price to move today. Check out front load washer and dryer pairs starting at $10.98 or just $5.49 each. This is your Black Friday store for more, including free delivery. The Black Friday is today's sale. Hurry in today for more selection, more savings, and more home for the holidays from the Brothers Maine. Your local store for more since 1938. It's the Big Baking Sale this Thursday through Sunday at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee Large Eggs, just 88 cents. Butter, only $1.88. Flour, just 98 cents. And that smart sugar, just 98 cents. This Thursday through Sunday, only at Hy-Vee. For the fourth year in a row, Lucille has transformed into a Christmas-themed pop-up bar. Miracle on King Street features festive decorations inside and cocktails on the outdoor patio with heaters. Lucille is part of Madison's Streetery program, established to give restaurants more outdoor dining space during the pandemic. This year, they are offering take-home cocktail kits to help people celebrate at home. And they all come in like different glasswares. You can buy the glassware as well. So like there's just fun little tiki mugs. We've got like some Santa pants and like Santa mugs. We've got a T-Rex dinosaur with like a little hat on it. It's cute. Um, you can also buy those as well. So people like to take them home so they can celebrate it at home as well. Lucille serves pizza and craft cocktails right off the Capitol Square. It is one of 95 locations across the country transforming into miracle pop-up bars this season. Still ahead at six, the state of Wisconsin is handing out millions of dollars to restaurants impacted by the pandemic. We'll explain who is eligible. And our quiet start to December weather continues. Chris has your first warm forecast next. Habitat for Humanity of Dane County continues to help hardworking families attain home ownership. By providing financial coaching, homeowners can manage their mortgage and other finances while building stability for their family. Strengthen our community. Support Habitat Dane County. At Papa Murphy's, we make fresh pizza that you bake at home. Because home is where the fun is. Right now, get the chicken garlic pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Golden Cars is having a huge winter sale. Don't miss out on 2017 Ford Escape starting at $11,995 or $185 per month. That's right. You can buy a 2017 Ford Escape starting at $11,995 or $185 per month. Golden Cars is family owned and operated for over 50 years. So just hurry in today and ask for my sister, Crystal the Pistol Gobin. Or my brother, Donovan Gobin. You gotta go to Gobin. GobinCars.com Menards has the tools you need to complete your projects in stock and ready to go. Like this works 20-volt cordless drill driver. It's lightweight and easy to control and includes a lithium-ion battery and charger. And check out this works 20-volt cordless 3-in-1 multi-sander with Hyperlock to let you change the sanding pad to suit the job. Save big on works power tools, plus a Menards gift card is always a great gift idea. Boy, season's greetings to you all from Menards. When you protect the people in your life from COVID-19, you help protect everyone in our community. Learn how you can stop the spread at dhs.wisconsin.gov slash COVID-19. Welcome back. Many restaurants may be ready to kiss 2020 goodbye, but the state has an early gift it needs to hand out before the year ends. Adam Dexter explains what they're getting and why not everyone will. Baker makes it all, doesn't it? If you visit Barclays on Janesville's west side. <laughs> well, that's 
That's a positive. You're almost guaranteed to run into Al Meehan. People say, hey, there's the mayor of Janesville. That's Al, you know? It's it's just a, a phrase because I know everybody. In addition to being the city's unofficial mayor, Meehan is Barclays' owner and general manager. Lately, conversations with his limited capacity crowd have a different feel. Well, when you come in and you talk to people and you're like, hey, you know, we just got to get through this, you know, one more day and one more month. We're in, you know, we're in December now, so where's the vaccine going to be? In the meantime, he's focused on keeping the place open. And just like so many other restaurants in Wisconsin, Barclays invested in outdoor dining, building this brand new patio outside the main restaurant. But just as it became too cold to use it for the winter, their indoor capacity was once again limited by local health officials. But the Wisconsin Restaurant Association says now a little help is on the way in the form of CARES funding. Wisconsin will cut more than 2,000 restaurants, each a $20,000 check. Essentially, the only requirement being last year's taxes showing between one and seven million dollars in revenue. It really is going to be a lifeline for a lot of restaurants to hopefully survive. Meehan says he's hopeful it's something he qualifies for. It would just help so many people right now. Restaurants, us, just a little security there, maybe a little security blanket that you can say, hey, we'll be good for another couple months until things get better, hopefully. But in the meantime, he's prepared to keep his emphasis on carry out while making sure his customers and friends stay safe. In Janesville, Adam Duxter, News 3 Now. One group of restaurants won't have access to the money. Those are places that opened since the beginning of the year. The WRA says the reason they're moving so quickly is because all of the CARES money has to be given out by the end of the calendar year or it can't be spent. All right, our streak of sunshine continues. Chris Reese now with our first one forecast. Yeah, even clearing skies out there tonight, Eric. It's a beautiful night. It is just chilly. So if you're going to be going out doing anything, I encourage you to just grab a jacket or something to keep yourself warm. 37, our temperature right now, which is warmer than we were this time yesterday. Winds coming out of the south and west at 6 miles per hour. That's what's helping to keep those warm temperatures out there. But here's what we have going on across the country as a whole. There's one storm system that passed by to our south. That storm system has weekend. That's all because there's high pressure on either side of it that really restricted the amount of moisture that it was able to tap into. We do have a weak cold front sliding south from the north that will keep our highs just a couple degrees cooler into tomorrow, but ultimately you're really not going to notice anything other than a change in wind direction. Tomorrow's winds will be more so northerly as opposed to the winds that we have out there right now. So that being said, get ready for a quiet night, a clear night, and it should be in Enjoyable as long as you are able to bundle up as you step outside. Temperatures continue to drop as we head through the overnight hours. We'll see those lows into the mid 20s. Tomorrow we'll see more sunshine, but temperatures topping out into the upper 30s instead of the lower 40s. So, like I said, just a smidge colder with that northerly wind flow. But then we start to move into the weekend, and that's where we'll begin to see more of the same. But there's the subtle differences that you'll notice. You'll see a little bit more in the way of cloud cover this weekend. We'll start out Saturday around 23. We'll start to warm up Saturday into the upper 30s again, but you see that cloud cover trying to stream into the picture. That's a shot of some cooler air that comes in as we move into the weekend. Here's our cold shot that we have out there right now. That starts to be reinforced as we move into Saturday, and with Saturday's reinforcing shot of cooler air, I would not be surprised if we see some flurries. Now, once we get past Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday next week, that's when we'll see a ridge develop with some warmer temperatures throughout the lower 48, but it's after that. Colder air starts to move in, and these shots of colder air towards next weekend, I believe, will have precipitation with them. That brings our chances to see rain and snow by the time we get you towards that extended forecast, and that's where I believe the pattern may begin to change up on us. But for now, we're above average with abundant sunshine. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. When the mercury dips below freezing, we know that snow and extreme cold aren't far behind. Now's the time to gear up for the season at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Help your home fight the cold with a new furnace filter, 3M window insulation kits, and portable zone heaters. Make sure your vehicle's good to go with a fresh battery or new set of tires. And save on cold weather boots, thermal underwear, and outerwear to keep your whole family warm. 
find the best deals and selection on cold weather gear. That's genuine value from Blaine's Farm and Fleet. For over 86 years, you have made Steinhoffels part of your family, and we would like to say thank you. With 35 to 50% off and great deals on the largest selection of furniture at the guaranteed lowest prices. Like this cocktail table, $4.59, and this sofa, only $4.99. This queen bed, just $7.49, or this dining table, $7.99. Get a Beautyrest Silver Queen for the price of a twin. It's Steinhoffels Customer Appreciation Sale, the sale that's all about you. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know it needs to get done, and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. The Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy providers are working together to help keep your heat and power on. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here. people who fight for what's right. For us, that means fighting for you when an accident has turned your life upside down. Isn't it time you had a health insurance company that shares the same values as you? One that acts like a trusted health partner that not only offers easy access to the doctors, hospitals, and clinics of UW Health, but also sees the greater good in keeping us healthy in the first place. A company that understands that serving our community means serving all of our communities. Isn't it time you had Quartz? Quartz, health plans built with you in mind. Friday morning, the Salvation Army is issuing a nationwide challenge to help those in need during the holiday season. We're talking to a Sun Prairie woman who's answering that call and helping people in our area. We'll see you from 4.30 to 7. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Finally tonight, an opportunity to help those in need this holiday season. The United States Post Office Operation Santa program is kicking off this week. Starting Friday, people can visit the USPS website to find a child in need by reading through letters from children and families. Once you find a letter that speaks to you, you can purchase gifts, wrap them, and take them to your local post office. Santa will handle it all from there. This is the 108th year for the Operation Santa program, and there's still time for families in need to sign up. Letters will be accepted through December the 15th. Man, busy month for Santa. Let's go to Chris for the final check of our forecast. Well, right now it's all sunshine that we're dealing with, so that's going to be good. We do have a chance of flurries into the weekend. On Sunday, we'll see a little weak disturbance passing by. That may touch off some flurries Sunday night, but most of the weekend and into next week is going to be absolutely beautiful. We'll see a chance for rain and snow by next weekend. All right, Chris, and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.